All right, so this is the URL that you want to start on. If you obviously don't have this URL, it's easy to find. You just go to Google, you type in ta get tax exempt on Amazon, and it is this one right here, the Amazon tax exemption program. And that will take you to a page that looks like this, right? And so that what you want to do now is you want to go through and you want to select all of these specific states. Now, you're not going to get tax exempt in every specific state. I think I'm tax exempt in most, but there are certain ones that I'm not tax exempt for. It's going to depend and differ state to state based on which ones you're going to struggle with getting tax exempt in and which ones are going to be relatively easy to you. I'm going to show you what works for me. Obviously, this is just anecdotal what works for me. Some of these you might get done easier if you have uh, you know, an EIN or a resale certificate in a different state, but obviously those are the prerequisites. Okay. So the ones that I, I have a tax exemption um, or I have a resale certificate for my business in Pennsylvania. So these ones are going to be specific for me, but chances are the majority of these are going to work for you as well. And I want to also stress that the easiest way to do this is obviously follow my lead here with the ones that I'm, I'm going to tell you you might struggle with, but then just go to the end of it. And whichever ones are giving you trouble, then just come back to the very beginning. You can just hit the back button. You'll see it down at the bottom once we go through these little prompts here. And then go back uncheck that one if it's giving you trouble and then just go back through the prompts again and redo it all. That's the easiest way to do it to reverse engineer to make sure that you obviously get tax exempt for as many potential states as you possibly can. So that if you're buying and shipping to addresses in those states, you're not paying sales tax on them. So the ones that give me trouble usually are Alaska, we're going to uncheck that one, California, we're going to uncheck that one, DC, Florida, um, Hawaii, Illinois always gives me trouble. They have a weird thing with, with like Chicago and Illinois. I'm not really sure what it is, but it always gives me trouble. So I just don't check it. Um, and then we come down, we go to Mississippi. We uncheck that one. New York always gives me trouble as well. We'll uncheck that one. South Carolina is unchecked and the rest of these look pretty good, right? So ideally we would be tax exempt for all of these states, not counting the ones that we're shipping products to if our buyer is in those specific states. So we, we're going to click save and continue. And it's going to take us to this next page where it's going to ask us in the state of Colorado, do you have a local tax exemption? I would just say, no, this doesn't apply to me. Here, we're going to take where it's going to ask you, like, what's the exemption status status of your business and why are you qualified? I always put in resale. And here it's basically just showing you the specific forms that you're going to need or, you know, the specific exemptions you're going to need to get tax exempt in all the states that you had checked. So just click continue. That's just information. Now this is blurred out um, because obviously I don't want to show you my specific business information, but you can see this, the, the things over here. You just want to fill these out. Organization name, right? What's your business name? Organization description, that's always resale. Business line, like what's your address? Obviously, you're going to put your address in there. And then and then you're just going to type your name and authorize signer name right here. And obviously your, your title is going to be CEO or, you know, whatever it is, obviously, for your specific business. All right. So now's the fun part. Now is where you're going to fill out your specific form. Now, the very first one right here is Pennsylvania. Um, I'm not sure if that's because my resale certificate is in Pennsylvania or if that's just because Pennsylvania specifically needs a Rev uh, 1220. I believe that it's because Pennsylvania, because when I do it on eBay, they always ask you for this specific form for Pennsylvania as well. So if obviously you are not, you don't have a business formed in PA, then uncheck Pennsylvania. And now right here, it's going to ask you, um, you know, what's your exemption type? So I always put resale right here. It's going to ask you the type of business that you performed. I always put retail trade. Then you're going to go down right here through the prompts for specific states. Okay. And those are all going to be the same thing. So you're always going to say, okay, well, if you, this is for me specifically, cause I'm in PA. So obviously take this with a grain of salt. If you are, have a business in West Virginia, or you have a business in Wisconsin or Vermont or whatever, then obviously you're going to click yes and go through the prompts there for whatever the information is, right? You should have your EIN already and you should have your resale uh, certificate. So your, your eight digit resale certificate number, as well as I believe it's a 10 digit EIN number. So we're just going to go through each one of these specifically. So because I have a business in PA, I'm going to say obviously no for all of these because I don't have a registration number for these. So I'm going to come down and click no for all of these. And then you just want to go through the prompts here, right? Like, okay, do you have an Arkansas registration number? No, I do not. So enter one of the following, an out-of-state number, which would be your out-of-state resale permit for your specific state or your federal identification number, which is going to be your EIN, okay? So I always go with the out-of-state if it's possible there. And then obviously mine would be PA. And I would type in 
my PA sales tax license number. And then I would do, this is like an eight digit number that you should get obviously through from the IRS once you go through and you file for your resale uh, certificate. So that's always gonna be the same eight digit number. And then the same thing for Georgia here. Um, obviously I have an out of state number. It's gonna be PA because that's where my, my uh, EIN is from. I have the Pennsylvania sales tax license number, which again is gonna be that same eight digit number uh, right there. This is not your EIN. This is your retail uh, certificate number. Okay. And then for every single one of these right here in this top bracket, where it goes through like all the way down to Wyoming for me specifically, it's going to be the same thing, right? No, you don't have a number out of state number, whatever your state is. And then your, uh, your retail certificate number in there. Right here for uh, Massachusetts specifically, obviously that's not an option to give the resale certificate. So you need your federal EIN. So go federal employer identification number, obviously. Okay. So it's nine digit. I said 10, I'm corrected. So enter your 10 digit uh, federal EIN. This is with no dashes. So usually when you get a, a federal EIN, it's going to be like two numbers, a dash, and then seven more numbers. So make sure you take the dash out and put all nine numbers in there, right? And then when it asks you to describe the property that you're going to be selling, it's always tangible goods and services for resales are always in there. Since I'm not selling services, I just delete that. I just say tangible goods for resale, and then I move on, all right? Now I'm engaged and registered as a retailer. That's what we're doing here. Describe generally the property you're going to be purchasing. Again, that's tangible goods for resale. And then the same thing goes with all these, but I believe it's going to be EIN. So, oh, no, it's not. So same thing as the ones above right here. So do you have an Alabama registration number? No, I do not, but I do have a PA one. Um, and then you're just going to put in your resale certificate. So most of the time it's going to be out of state number is it's going to let you put out of state number in, and then you can select your, your state and put your uh, reseller's license number in there. Like I said, every once in a while, you'll click one of these when you say no, like Idaho, for example, where it'll ask you to put your EIN in. And then in this case, you want to look for the examples, right? If it doesn't have an example and just asks you to put your EIN in there, put it nine, put all nine digits without a dash. If it gives you the example like it does here with the dash, then you want to include the dash in there, okay? So that's just a little distinction that tripped me up in the beginning. Something that stupid is literally what tripped me up and wouldn't let me get it to submit it. So just make sure you're going through slowly each one. Always click no or obviously yes if you have that and then input your, your state if you have that state. If you don't click no, always go for the out of state number first. If it doesn't let you do that, then go federal EIN. And if it's federal EIN, either put all uh, nine digits in there if there's no example of a dash or all nine digits with the dash after two if it shows you the example. Now right here, it's gonna be tangible personal property for resale. As we move down, it's gonna be the same thing, right? Do you have a Virginia registration number? No, I have an out of state it's for PA. Here's my reseller's license number. Are you doing business under any other name? I'm not, you might be. If you are obviously, and you have a DBA, then click yes and put your name in there. I do not. So then after that, we're gonna click save and continue. 